channel and welcome to our initial review of the Hollyland Lark Max dual microphone wireless system. Okay, we're getting back to that wireless microphone arena. Are you not entertained? Uh, looks like you've finally decided to replace those Comica devices that we reviewed a couple years ago, huh? Yeah, it was getting time. So, you know, I was dealing with, uh, with some issues, even though these served me well, I was dealing with some issues like the uh, plastic shroud around the uh, integrated microphone. That plastic was cracking and actually breaking completely off. And as well, uh, what I thought was a, you know, foolproof, uh, you know, locking mechanism that uh, would make sure that the lavalier uh, microphone connection didn't come unplugged wasn't quite so foolproof after all and and that uh, false sense of security was was obviously not good because there were some times where uh, that actually uh, became unplugged yeah you know now that you mention it I do kind of recall seeing that behavior the last time we used them together in in Michigan and and also in Nebraska too I kind of remember we when we were filming the original review that it kind of became disconnected and I Definitely recall you blaming me for that as well. That was uh, quite the memory. Yeah, so out with the old and in with the new. So the Hollyland Lark Max, uh, why is this our initial review of this new product? Okay, so first, sorry I blamed you for the microphone disconnection being a Keith being Keith uh, situation. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, I selected the uh, Hollyland uh, Lark Max um, you know, as, as being a, you know, newer product. I mean, it had the feature set I was looking for, but why is it our initial review? Cause, um, we usually, you know, review things that we've had use of them for a longer period of time. Uh, and it's, this has been, you know, fairly recently released. And, uh, although I have tested it a bit, you know, it hasn't been as long as we usually do. Yeah. I mean, usually we do review products that have quite a bit more miles on them by the time we review them. Um, and, and generally, we don't, um, we don't get products prior to release, generally. Um, we would love to do that, but we, we haven't done too much of that. But I guess this is a brand new product, and so it's new to us, and I assume that means we're going to do an initial review like now, and then we'll follow it up with a long-term review later on. That's spot on, Keith. So um, I've tested the microphone system you know, quite a bit today, but I think a bit more testing uh, and seeing how it holds up over the long haul uh, could be very useful uh, for everybody. Yeah, I do wonder sometimes if the larger channels that are getting products for free to review, I, I sometimes wonder if they actually use them very much after the review is over. Uh, I don't, I wonder, I wonder about that sometimes. In our case, we're not really receiving products prior to release. So generally, what we are getting is stuff that we actually need so, so when we are getting something, we're we're doing an initial review, uh, but we're also holding on to it because we need to, and we're using these products so that I don't know. We're kind of in the same position as our viewers are. I like to believe that uh, we're reviewing things the same way you would because you actually need to use them. Well said, my friend. So. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into what you get in this kit and, uh, you know, share some initial thoughts on whether, uh, whether I actually like the, the system or not. Okay, so let's get into it. So with the kit, it looks like you get two microphones and transmitters that uh, come with the kit, as well as a single receiver that you would plug into the camera. Uh, and along with that, a carrying case, right, that would charge your uh, transmitters and receivers as well. Is that correct? Absolutely. So uh, Keith, here is the charging carrier, right? So you open this up and you can put both microphones and the uh, receiver here. So, right, so the microphone has uh, an integrated transmitter on it and then the receiver goes here. That uh, receiver is touchscreen. This uh, you can close up. It's got the uh, USB-C on it, but then there is a separate case that will hold the entire kit, right? So this fits into this area of the carrier. There's a separator, and then you have a zip uh, pouch that'll hold all the accessories, the cables that ship with it. And that way, when you go to, you know, go someplace and this might get subjected to a little bit of, of uh, potential abuse, you can put it inside this protective case. It is 
kind of a soft hard case, if that makes sense, right? A soft hard case. The microphones I'm actually wearing right now, so I'll put some photos of those up. I'm also uh, using the receiver at the moment. It's attached to the camera because uh, we're going to be uh, showing you what this, this unit sounds like by using it for this episode. But you can see one of the uh, actual microphones that's hanging here from the magnetic uh, device for holding that. And then I'm using a lavalier for the other because I want to be illustrate the sound difference between those two, if there is any. Yeah, that sounds good. See what I did there? Sounds good. Um, yeah, I'm curious if there's a case for the case for the case. They don't have that, do they? No, just kidding. Uh, seriously though, on a serious note, uh, it does look like the receiver is a little bit on the larger side size uh, compared to, for example, the DJI or the uh, Rode equivalent products. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, Keith, that is is fair to say. I think that the uh, the Lark is, uh, is Max is, is just a little bit bigger, uh, maybe wider than the DJI and the and the Rode. Um, now, certainly compared to you know the Comica I was using, this is the uh, the Comica receiver. Um, they're about the same width, but the Comica is much deeper, right? And this this was never a problem on my Canon uh, camera, any of the Canon cameras I use. And then, uh, this is actually one of the transmitters. And so the transmitter, you can see if I put these up side by side, this is much larger. Um, and I, th I think that the Hollyland, uh, Lark Max is probably close in size, uh, to the DJI and, uh, and the Rode, uh, you know, give or take some of the dimensions are a little bit different. I know the, the roads are, are very square, right? Versus this is more of a, a skinny rectangle and the DJI is a very skinny, uh, rectangle. The trend now is towards, you know, moving away from these larger type units to, uh, you know, small and, and maybe a little bit inconspicuous. Yeah, no, that's good to get a, a dimensional gut and feel comparison between the Hollyland and some of the traditional existing competitors. Um, and I noticed that you have the lavalier, uh, Mike, you mentioned that you had connected to your shirt with the magnetic uh, clasp, I guess we could call it the magnetic attachment. And so it looks like what we'll be able to do, I think this is where we're going with this, right, is you're going to record audio simultaneously on each of your two uh, microphones, one being the lavalier and the other one just being the built-in or integrated microphone that's built right into the transmitter. Uh, do I have that roughly correct? You're going to say the same thing and just kind of show the audience uh, through the YouTube replay audio that they're going to get uh, the perception of the difference between lavalier and integrated mic. Is that right? That's absolutely correct, Keith. I'm going to read something and both mics are recording simultaneously. So they are going to get the exact same recording in terms of what I'm saying at the same time because they're recording at the same time to separate channels on the audio uh, input for my camera. So that way we will have a 100% comparison. Now, I don't know if there'll be any sound difference uh, between having the lavalier connected and using the integrated, as, as you pointed out, microphone. Uh, so this is really just to see, is there any sound difference uh, in, in using uh, either of those methodologies? So here we go, I'm gonna go ahead and read this. This is a microphone test of the Hollyland Mark wireless microphone system, comparing the audio between the built-in microphone and attaching a lavalier. This is a microphone test of the Hollyland Mark wireless microphone system, comparing the audio between the built-in microphone and attaching a lavalier. Yeah, well, good. I hope that helps our audience with a little bit of uh, perspective for comparison. Hopefully it's useful. Uh, and before we dive into the specs, why don't you give us your overall impressions? So I, I really like um, this charging case. You know, it, this, is, this is a nice uh, element to the kit. Uh, as well as the uh, the overall you know kit carrying case, so that you can you know carry the the charging case itself and all the accessories and and uh, not lose any of them. Yeah, I, I do feel uh, I do feel like that last comment might have been directed at me a little bit, and uh, I must say I do deserve that because I can tell you from experience, if you don't put the stuff in the case, that doesn't help you from losing it, uh, losing all the stuff. But I, I will say I like the idea of there being a case with uh, a place for everything, but I kind of don't like that there's a case for the case to have even more of the stuff that also needs to go with the system to not be in the case. I don't know. I feel like there should just be a case. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it, Keith. I, I guess uh, for you, this is 
This is a bit of the uh, the Russian doll uh, thing, right? We've got a case within a case within a case. I I get your point, but I also know why they they did this, right? So to give you this hard carrying case that you know has the easy open lid and the magnetic uh, insertion of the the accessories in here, I, I don't know how you do this and then integrate all of you know these cables that uh, you have and you know. Uh, maybe the wind muffs and you know the the uh, lavalier mics, all of that stuff. So I get it. I don't know. Maybe they could have done it where this just has this integrated in, you know, and it doesn't remove. And then you put a USB connection in the back of the case. I don't know. It's. Um, I, I think there's probably going to be people that really like it and people that dislike it, and that's that seems to be everything in the world, right? So anyway. Um, you know, the, uh, some other things about this, that the build quality on, on all the parts is, is really good. I mean, when I compare it to the Comica, I mean, the, the biggest knock on this Comica, and, and it's probably why it's falling apart, right, the, the crack in there, is it's, you know, if you can hear that, it's, it's really, really plasticky versus this, this I actually kind of, it, it's almost a little heavy to be hanging from my, my shirt, it's, it's built super solid. Uh, and that's great. Uh, I mean, it makes you feel like this, this could take a little bit of a, of a beating versus this definitely doesn't. Uh, so anyway, build quality is great. I, I love the, the feel of it. It just feels like it's something that's, that's designed to be used uh, well. Now to, to, to last point on that, you know, Comica versus this, is this Comica was also, you know, a third less uh, expensive. So, you know, price point, you got to keep that that in mind uh, in terms of, you know, where each of them is priced today. Yeah, the old saying, you get what you pay for, strikes again. So let's talk about the accessories now, shall we? Yeah, so Keith, it, uh, it includes the cables, uh, you know, to, to charge a USB uh, A to C so you can charge the charging case. Um, it has a uh, USB-C to lightning cable so that you can use this with an Apple device as its uh, audio input. It also has USB-C to USB-C uh, with one of them having you know, a nice right angle on it uh, so you can connect this up to say like an Android uh, phone or really any device that uh, will, uh, is compatible with this cable and doing a USB-C audio uh, input. So you get that, you get the charging case, you get the um, outer case, if you want to call it that, and uh, you get the receiver and two of the uh, transmitters, and then you get the uh, wind muff uh, for each of the transmitters. So it does have two of those uh, wind muffs that just slide on the integrated mic. Yeah, you know, and it's all of those cables and all that stuff that you were just talking about, I think, which is what's creating the need, as you said, to have the case for the case. Um, and I think I buy what you're saying about the case, but uh, I almost feel like there's an analogy with uh, airport luggage, because one thing I hate is not, I'm directing anger at this product, it doesn't deserve it, but all audio video products have these black quasi hard nylon bags that they all go in and you look at it and it looks like an airport terminal luggage claim from the 1990s. You know, everyone has the same black bag. It's, ugh. I almost wish that that manufacturers of mics and cameras and lighting and all of these accessories that they would actually brand the cases themselves so that it's just not all morphing into this giant thing. Anyway, uh, that's a bit of a digression, but. Uh, you, you were talking about all the cables, and I did notice that you didn't mention the lavalier mics. Was that a oversight on your part? Uh, no, Keith, that wasn't an oversight. At the time of this recording, uh, Holland does not include uh, any of the lavalier mics uh, with this kit. Now, fortunately for me, when I got it, uh, Amazon was running a special, and, and maybe Hollyland was running that kind of across the board, right? So I don't know that it was an Amazon special, but uh, when you got the kit, they would actually give you a free gift of uh, the two lavaliers and the uh, wind muff. Uh, so you had the foam and the wind muff covering for the lavalier mic. And uh, that was free, it's normally $60. So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm 
I'm kind of hoping that that was maybe the new way they were going to package that, but uh, I don't know that that, that is uh, the case. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I mean, if you're going to use a lavalier, and I suspect a lot of people will, uh, that you have to spend an, an extra, I don't know, 60 bucks on top of the system that you just bought just to get the lavaliers. I mean, I mean, I suppose you could buy some cheapy ones, but then what would be the point of buying some cheapy ones to go along with your very nice, expensive uh, wireless mic system? So you want the whole tool chain to be nice if you bought something nice. So yeah, it does seem like a bit of an oversight. I, I'm with you on that, Keith. I'm I'm glad I didn't have to spend another sixty bucks to get uh, the lavaliers. And I, and there are times. I mean, I I just personally prefer the look of a small lavalier up here. Even even though this transmitter is small, I I prefer to have it kind of out of frame. Um, I don't know. It, it's just just my personal preference. And uh, you know, if you you do buy the kit uh, for for uh, two ninety nine, and then you throw another sixty dollars on top of it, well, you're only you're only about forty dollars away from you know the brand new Rode Wireless Go Pro uh, that's going to be released soon. At least as of the time of this recording, you're only about forty dollars away from that, and it includes uh, some some pretty nice uh, features, including you know a twist locking uh, lavalier connection, which you know that's that's even better than the kind of connection I have on this, and certainly you know the the pretend. Uh, secure connection that I had on the on the Comica. Ah, damn it! So there's a new Rode Wireless Go Pro system coming out. I did not know that. I actually came into this episode thinking that maybe I would want to buy this Hollyland Lark Max Pro for myself. Um, I'm I'm a Rode guy. I have all pretty much all Rode mics. Uh, I have the the Wireless Go, the original, on me right now, and man. You're you're a terrible influence on me now cuz I'm actually thinking about this uh wireless Go Pro. In fact, why would why would somebody buy this Hollyland uh over the wireless Go Pro from Rode in the first place? Keith, you know, that's a great question and and money is probably the first answer. Uh you know, if if uh you're not having to buy the uh lavalier mic uh, or they just start including it, right? So if you don't need it, or they just start including lavalier mics, then you're looking at a hundred dollar difference. And for some people, that hundred dollars is uh, the next piece of kit that they need uh, in their setup. And I think for most people, and and certainly my needs, it's going to cover like ninety percent, ninety five percent of your need or more. And and honestly, it's probably more like closer to hundred percent of my need. Do I like the idea of the twist lock uh, lavalier? Yep. But I wouldn't call it a you know an absolute requirement. If uh, you know we look at range, um, you know Hollyland's got a great range on it. I'm not going to do any range long range uh, tests. Uh, we're actually going to defer uh, and put a link to the Make Art Now uh, test. Josh uh, Yo did a great great range test. Uh, there's no reason to redo that that range test, and he also tested it against uh, the you know two main competitors at the time. So we'll refer refer you to that. But it's it's got the range. It's got pretty much everything that you're you're gonna need. Uh, and at a hundred dollars less for some people, again, that's gonna be all the difference in the world. Yeah, sounds like this is a really good system, and uh, as I always say, good is often good enough. And it sounds like the Hollyland system. It, is an absolute champ in terms of battery life, right? That's a main takeaway you have? Uh, yeah, Keith, that, that's definitely true. So the transmitters themselves are rated for seven and a half hours. The receiver is actually rated for nine hours. And then when you combine that with the uh, charging case, this case is gonna let you get up to 22 hours of recording time. Uh, so obviously you'd have some, uh, you know, some charge time in between, but, uh, you know, you would think most of the time, it, you know, you'd have some downtime in a production. You could actually uh, put them in, charge them up and be uh, ready to go. So 22 hours uh, is, is pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, and even the seven and a half hours on the transmitters and nine hours on the receiver is, is uh, really, really good. Yeah, that is good. And, and, you know, I think the Comica had about six hours of battery life and uh, the DJI, I believe, was around five and a half hours. So six, five and a half. The Rode Wireless Go 2, which is not the one I have, but the newer one, that one stated to be about seven hours. So 
sounds like it's a good uh, performance stack up. So Keith, something that we haven't talked uh, a whole lot about that is is definitely a feature of uh, of the uh, device is the noise cancellation. So it does have a noise isolation that you can turn on and off, and that's that's probably good because sometimes um, you know noise isolation uh, does have some negative, potentially negative impacts on the sound that you're trying to capture. Uh, I put it through its paces and, and we'll show the various scenarios that I recorded in uh, and very different types of noise because you know you could probably do a, a deep dive on, on the different types of noise and what it would take to you know isolate and eliminate that noise in the environment. Uh, I think the noise cancellation is okay to good depending on the type of noise. I'll, I'll let you decide what you think is good and, and not so good. So this is the uh, Lark Max with no uh, noise cancellation on and also the uh, windscreen not attached. So we're, next run is going to be with the uh, noise cancellation on. Okay, I have now turned noise cancellation on. <laughs> My body is no longer between the transmitter and the receiver. So I'm gonna walk past the camera and uh, put this away, but that gives you an idea. And then we didn't talk very much. The receiver actually has a uh, touch color screen uh, that's very nice. It also has a mechanical wheel. I get a little lost in the menus, to be honest. Um, I, you know, I kind of, the navigation, although it's nice that it's touch screen and everything, you've got the hard wheel. I haven't cracked the code on when I use the wheel and, and which, you know, what I can do on the touch screen. Uh, in terms of navigation. Once I get into a menu, it's fine. It's just moving from, you know, the two microphone menus uh, to, you know, what what uh, general settings I want to set, uh, you know, whether it's the uh, safety recording in stereo and mono. Uh, these are all some features that uh, the, the device has. Yeah, the touchscreen menus. I appreciate your comments that it, you can get lost in the menus. I mean, Honestly, with cameras being what they are, most fancy pants cameras like what we're using have pretty deep uh, touch screen menu systems that need to be learned, right? Uh, to have that also for the microphone uh, does seem like I don't want it to be a complex touch screen menu system, but if it ultimately ends up making it uh, easier to access the functions we need to, then I'm all for it. For Noise cancellation, you know, as an NVH engineer, I, I tend to think about uh, stationary noise versus transient noise. And some of the noise cancellation, the type of noise cancellation that's easy to do is stationary. That's something like fan noise, lawn mowers, uh, dishwashers, you know, things that set up a sound spectrum and persist for a long time. Uh, those are relatively easy uh, compared to what we would call transient noise, like a dog bark, or you drop something heavy on the ground. That That's a challenge, and talking is something that's kind of in between, but that's kind of like the way I, I think about things. Thank you for staying on for this long. Please like this video if you're still here. You owe us that if you're still watching, and um, hit the subscribe button as well. Bruce, any final thoughts? Yeah, Keith, uh, thanks for, for that last handoff here. Uh, yeah, everything that Keith asked you to do, uh, you know, turn on the uh, all notifications so you know about uh, new content from uh, Dad's Talk Tech, and uh, you will see Keith and Bruce on the next episode of Dad's Talk Tech.